big a building are you talking about, Chris? Like I, a square feet, or you have some idea? Yeah, I talked to uh, several of the, the architects that, mm -hmm. that build jails, and a 48, 48 bed facility is kind of what we have roughly figured right now that uh, our tax will be able to support. And uh, talking to most of them, it costs three hundred dollars a square foot to build a jail, and a forty-eight bed facility in the sheriff's office runs about seventeen thousand square feet. So um, that's kind of what we're looking at offhand. Of course, we don't have the plans or anything like we did the last time, but we didn't have the five thousand dollars to spend to have a set of plans drawn up like last time. Plus, we didn't have the time. You know, we got this dumped on us in August, uh, so we didn't have the time to, uh, to to get an architect and get some plans on board. So uh, that's what we're looking at right now, but. In the end, what we're going to do is we, if it passes and we move forward, we're going to build a facility that our, our tax can pay for. So right now, a half cent sales tax will, will roughly generate $450,000 a year. So uh, we're, that's what we're looking at is build something that our tax can pay for. So, what are you thinking about building this? Well, initially we had talked about up above KKOZ, and I got met with some great opposition on that by some of the neighbors and everything. So I went back, I talked to Lance, um, you know, I think realistically we're probably looking at maybe out on Industrial Park Road somewhere. Uh, maybe yeah, if this thing gets passed, get with AIDC or someone out there and see if we can't can't uh, improve and build out there on Industrial Park Road. So the property up here, you don't think? Well, we got met with some pretty big opposition from the neighbors uh, up there, and uh, I went back and talked to Lance, and they had a pretty good turnout for the meeting, and uh, I went up there and met with all of them, and um, you know I. One, two things. One, I really didn't want any organized opposition against it, and that's what we were fixing to have. And two, I honestly don't know if building a 17,000 square foot jail, the only way we would have to go would be up. We wouldn't have really any room for expansion. Uh, the new jails that they're building now are like a pod type system, so if we build this 48 bed facility, then it, it's built with the possibility of having another pod built onto it. It's like Ozark County's got room for one more pod on their jail. Uh, we went down there and took a, took a look at it, went through a sheriff read. So, uh, realistically, looking at it up there, I don't think that we'd have the room to do what we needed to do. And, and then we were actually kind of getting some pretty organized opposition against it up there. How many acres do you think you're going to need if you're out in the industrial park? I have no clue. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Um, I have focused, uh, you know, I kind of went out and got the, the general information, and then I have focused strictly on just trying to get the word out as much as possible. Um, I've had well, I had two meetings last night, went from Twin Bridges to uh, Brixie, uh, Rockbridge, and, and Dora over in there. I've uh, been having anywhere from four or five meetings a week. So that's really kind of what I focused on. Uh, I figured that, you know, if we can get it passed, get with you guys, get with the uh, uh, commission, and then we would start looking for a place to put it. How much will your tax raise? 450000 a year is right now is what, what a half cent tax will raise. So a half cent, and that's plus or minus a little bit there. So um, I think that's a kind of in the ballpark of, of what Kerry said. There's some years we get closer to 500,000. I think there was two years ago, if I'm, if I'm correct, it seems like there was a year we were down about 430. So um, we're looking, the average was 450,000. You're, you're talking like 5.1 million for a correct. facility. Yeah, it'd be about 5.1 million for a jail and sheriff's office. So. Um, you know, other things that we're running into with the jail down there, one, we have nobody that can work on our locking system anymore. We're having a hard time finding that. We got doors that aren't closing properly. We got locks that are an absolute nightmare. Uh, sometimes we're getting them in and we don't think the key's gonna open up to get them out. They're gonna have to get a welder. So, uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with a lot of issues there. We're probably gonna have some plumbing issues along the line. That's gonna cause, that's gonna create some pretty expensive jackhammering. And when we start running that, we're gonna run into thousands of dollars, so. Uh, and talking to the commission, uh, what their plans are with the old facility if it were to pass, uh, and talking to Lance, I know the courthouse is out of storage, so they're looking at you know maybe like some of the vaults and stuff there, being able to utilize those for courthouse storage, and uh, maybe working with probation and parole or something to keep the front office open. So uh, that that's initially what they've indicated. Okay, and if it if it fails, you'll be forced to outsource your your yeah. prisoners. Yeah. Have a rough idea of what that would yeah. cost the county in a, in a year? About four hundred, a little over four hundred thousand a year if we stay on twenty five uh, inmate average. We averaged twenty five inmates a day last year. That was our average. There were times, guys, we were down to thirteen. There were times we were up closer to forty. So our average, when you, our 
our crime star system computes it once we get it at the average is 25. Um, I took that number times $45 a day times 365 days a year and came out that were $400,000. The biggest problem in talking to the sheriffs in the surrounding counties was is I don't know where I'd go with 25 people. Ozark County may be able to hold four or five, uh, but you know, you've got Taney County stays constantly full because they're always calling Green County, Christian County, they're all the time full because they call one of us a house prisoners at times. So I don't know where we would go with 25 people. That's the biggest problem. That, one of the biggest problems I've seen, plus the county doesn't have the 400,000 to, to house out of county. That figure did not include transportation miles, deputies out of county, deputy salary, anything like that. That was just strictly what we would pay another county to do that. So um, I ran the jail last year, right about $100,000 is what it cost us to run just the jail last year. So you're looking at four times the cost just to house out of county before you figure in anything else. I, th I think you answered this question a little ago, but I was riding. No. I, I was riding to another oh, town. Oh, you're fine. I think you told what all is this building going to uh, have? Your office and... It would be my office and it would be the, the jail. So it would be the jail, the sheriff's office, and um, I'm pro, kind of like Caney County has an indoor recreational area. I'm kind of more leaning towards that because uh, you start getting people outside, they uh, um, have a better chance to escape, but I'm looking at more like of an indoor area with the be able to put the natural lighting in for them to be able to walk around in. Because that's one of the things we have to do. We have to give them an area that they that's big enough for them to walk around in. They have to have an area big enough to walk around in. So, Taney County has one that's got like the real high walls and, uh, and it's, it's got a ceiling over it, but it's got the panels where it's got the natural lighting, which I would like to put that in because then it can double as, as rooms for either jailhouse ministry, we had counseling that wanted to come in. I mean, it could be doubled as, as a lot of things. So, but basically, yes, it would be the sheriff's office in the jail. Dispatch, you know. dispatch you'd have dispatch there. Uh, I would, really, what I would like to do, it would just be dependent on if there was enough money there or not, looking at it and seeing what the cost of building is. So I'd like to at least have an area in there, a room big enough in there that at some point, if we ever do go 911, that we might also have the possibility to house 911 in there. So um, we'd look into that as well. Who would make the decision to close our jail if this doesn't pass? Well, it's probably going to come down to myself and the commissioners who's going to come down to. I talked to Ozark County today, and I talked to Gail, and I hit her up, and I said, hey, I said, what happened in Ozark County when they had their issue down there? And she said that they got sued federally. Uh, basically, I mean, back up on that. We'd have two options. One, we could close it down to avoid any lawsuits that we would have, or two, we could stay open and take the lawsuits and let the, federal, let the feds shut us down, kind of like they did Ozark County. What happened down there is Gail had told me that um, when they got sued, then they were ordered to build a jail, and then they were also ordered that they could only hold the, in, the prisoners there uh, short time. They didn't allow the, and you may remember back when that happened, but she said they couldn't house them for a long time in their jail because of like no windows, no lighting, all the things that we're talking about here. So basically we have two options. Either we take the lawsuits, and like, let, the, let it come down to a federal lawsuit and then tell us that we have to shut it down or we shut it down. And I don't think the county's in a position that they're gonna take that, take that risk with these standards that are coming out. So um, and talking to Lance, if this doesn't pass, then it will be a decision between the commissioner and I and we'll, we'll shut it down before we start taking the federal lawsuit because um, there's gonna be enough publicity about this that every inmate that comes in there is gonna know what we're not in compliance with. And, and uh, you know, it's like anything that happens, it's like the new stealing law that happens, you know, we're going to, uh, every inmate's going to hear about it and every county that's not in compliance is going to get sued. I mean, I talked to Sheriff Adler and I was like, hey, what are you going to do? He said, I don't know. He said, I gave it to the commission. They haven't, they haven't said nothing. So I don't know if they're planning on riding it out and taking the hits or what they're planning on doing in Wright County. Texas County has a really nice facility. Yeah, we're not going to build <laughs> We won't build anything like Texas it's County. It's a big jail. It's a big jail. Yeah. I think they've got over 100 inmates. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they do. They have, they have a nice facility. There won't be any way that we would come close to that. You ever seen them in Texas County? My God. That size is a ton of hay. It's huge, <laughs> really. A monster. Two story or three. At least two story. Marble floors. Looks like the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. It's a big jail. That's been the biggest. That's been the biggest thing out east. My campaign out east for a jail. My campaign out there. They said uh, 
Um, if you're not going to build one like Texas County, we don't think we want one like Texas County. I'm like, shoot, we don't have the tax base that Texas County's got. So, but you know, like you know, like I told, like I've been telling everybody, this is this is about meeting the standards. We have to meet the standards, but we don't, we don't have a choice. So, what? Is 48 bed? I mean, how do you come? How did you come up with it? 48 bed? Basically, on the 48 bed, as I was talking to the architects and and then looking at what we would like to build and money wise, um, you know, kind of what the cost was, we came up with roughly the 48 bed facility that we felt that our tax would be able to support to pay off. So we didn't want to, you know, get overextended there. And that could change. I mean, that could change. You know, this passes and our tax may be higher or, or you know, we may end up construction may be cheaper. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. And uh, so that was just kind of talking to architects and, and looking at what our tax could support. Uh, that's where we came up with the 48 bed facility. So it, it, it can do more, it can be, it can be less. I got the jail standards. Anybody like me to email them to you? I'll be more than happy to. You shoot me something on the, um, I tried to post it to the Facebook and it wouldn't let me upload it on the Facebook. Um, but uh, if anybody wants to shoot me an email at the office, I'll email you guys the standards back. It's about 60 pages. Um, so it's, it's pretty lengthy. I mean, it goes into a lot of things. And, and um, you know, like I said, we're just, we're to that point to where, where we have to do it. And if we don't have a jail, you know, we're, we're in trouble here. We are. I mean, we'll see properties values go down. We'll see our enrollment schools go down. I mean, we, we would see a lot happen here if, if we didn't have a jail. Anyone have any more questions? No. Gentlemen, thank you for the time. Thank you for getting me in. Thanks, Chris. And if you guys want those jail standards, shoot me an email and I'll get them over to you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you guys. Josh, I'll go say September, as the financial reports out, we were at uh, 1.7 million, and uh, some of our checkbook balances were running in the negative at that time. Um, since that time, we've, we've done a little better. Our sales tax came in, and, and we've been able to do some transfers. So those those balances are looking better. We did have a bond payment that went out that was a little over 100,000. So this morning we were back down to about 1.6, but we're, we're staying pretty steady in there. So felt pretty good about that. Are you here to listen? Yes, sir. Well, uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to yours. All right, thank you. Sit down. I'm going to wait on the ordinance and let you talk about what's down in here first, if that's great. Okay. Um, the first thing on there is Ray Davidson. And uh, David Davidson came in, and he, he's down on the list there somewhere. Well, he's the next one on the list. We talked about uh, giving David an option of a discount on gas or taking a set amount of money each month like the fire chief does. David chose the amount each month, which is $500. And so... Uh, in the process of talking to him about that, he asked if it might be possible to pay Ray Davidson, who is our shop teacher, he's helped him out there a lot, pay him something, one-time payment for some of the work that he's done. And uh, I told him that we would talk about it. Um, I don't particularly, I mean, he did, he, all of them have done a lot of work, but uh, my suggestion in terms of Ray is that we do pay him something. Uh, I don't I don't object to a five hundred dollar payment to him if if the council does or if you've got some other suggestion that one time payment, yeah. Uh, okay. We need a motion. Peggy, does that cause any kind of a family problem? Um, yeah. No, no, we'll just do it under like contract labor and then only Suzanne can give us the documentation for the minutes. Okay. Before we do, I've got a question. How many other people have contributed labor? I, I mean, I wonder, I think we really need to be careful.
careful about that. I don't know what I, I don't know if there was anyone else that contributed significant time except Mary Kay. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think Ava, anybody's had a hanger. Ava, Ava Aviation Group, and there's a, a little memo in there. Um, they were doing work like on the building and stuff just to. That's the club. Yes. I want to say compensate for the hangar lease. They're, they do this work to the way the lease. The lease yeah, fee. They, yeah, they are not paying for their hangar lease. So the, the aviation club does a lot of the kids do an awful lot of stuff out there. And Ray's in charge of them, but Ray did an awful lot of work uh, on the gas tank, pouring concrete and all that kind of stuff. And uh, as well as with he and David both did a lot of these kids. So I guess that was my question. As far as, far as I know, as far as I know, Burley, there's not anybody else that I've heard David talk about. Um, Question like if there were some other ones out there that were, you know, donated, you know, quite a bit of time and, and come right off to one compensate one, one and not the other. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of hours with David. Yeah. On that. There's no other one. Oh, motion. I didn't have a problem. Motion by Ray Hunt. No. Second. Second. Let's take it all in favor. Uh, they're both Davids, but there's no relation there. There's no relation, but <laughs> David Davidson was right under that. And since David Davidson has decided that he would like to have the 500, uh, I suspect we need a motion for that also. Motion must stand. And I'll, I'll second it. Second it by Burley. All in favor? Aye. Okay. One time for Davis. I'm telling you, that, that airport Saturday, I think it was, they were they were just lined up for going out. I guess he had a poker gun or something. Uh -huh. There were little airplanes going in and out of there all day long. Uh, uh, he called the house Sunday evening. Three thirty, one up. I wanted to go up, so I, we went out there at five o'clock. He took Dorothy and me up in, in the plane, and man, there wasn't a breeze. It was just as smooth as silk. And we stayed up about an hour. We were over Mansfield. You could see him and Tower. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, that's clear. Just, yeah, that's, that's clear. Clear to me. That's clear. And uh, I would invite, because you know how proud he is of the airport. Any of you that would like to go up, go see him. He'd, he'd be glad to take you up in the plane. But when we landed, you hardly even knew we hit the ground. As we came in, he said, I'm, he said we're just gliding in. That's, that's what it was like. We just glided in just as smooth as silk, hit the runway. So, anyway, it was a beautiful day for it. So. Um, Verizon. James Cardinal is the guy's name that I talked to with the reason. And they were proposing coming in and putting a tower inside the flagpole down on the square, which you're probably talking about, something that big around. And then he sent us a picture, and the picture, and you know me, I'm not knowing anything about towers, didn't even think about it. <clears throat> uh, they had a building built on the square to house the equipment service the tower and it, you had a building on each side and a walkway through the middle and I see him the back and I said I, I'll present it to the council but I'm not in favor of that building down with the gazebo and I didn't hear from him well I guess he was waiting for me to talk to the council about it but in the meantime he called back so in the meantime we started trying to 
promote the old water tower here, which we believe only had city police and the sheriff's antennas on it. And there's a building already there, if it's suitable. Well, he didn't know if it's strong enough to hold it, you know, a bunch of stuff. So anyway, I said, well, I think it's strong enough to hold your antenna. And, uh, well, he didn't want to interfere. So anyway, I got an email back today with, and what it amounted to is, uh, their engineers are going to consider the water tower and look at it to see if it's suitable, and they're going to talk about it and get back with it. But I didn't think any of us wanted to building next to the gazebo. With so, so what's this going to do for us? Well, he contends that the get better distribution of the signal the closer they are to the center of town. And that's just exactly what he told me. You now know all I know about it. But you'd think that you would get as much of a distribution from the water tower mm -hmm. as you would from the center of the square. You're not that far away and you're a lot and he says height isn't the only consideration. Well, <clears throat> again, there, you know, there's things about it I don't know. So that's just what it says. So that's still to be discussed and decided sometime. The back wall, and we, uh, I finally, the guy, the guy from Delta came down last Thursday. Sure enough, we did have actual leaks over here in the furniture room, and he repaired them. And Sue, I wasn't here. Suzanne talked to him about the back wall. He said, I know somebody who can repair that back wall. That's a good job and so forth. Anyway, I called there today, and the guy was to call me back, and I've not had a call back from him. So uh, I've also got the name of somebody from Gaston Hill. Uh, David Froling gave me a name there, which I can call. So. I'm kind of sitting. We just need to get a couple of guys in here and have them look at it and see. Now you said they repaired the leak uh, over the furnace. Over the furnace. They had two so, or three of them there. Okay. Do we still have the leak now? Well, you know that we sprayed water on the roof, and we should, that showed the leak there. We haven't had any of so that. So we may not have a leak now. It may not. Okay. But it does make me believe that Burley is right that whatever we've had is coming through the wall. Okay. Well, I hope that's the case. Because that's what you just pointed out. And well, I, I hope so too. And, uh, you know, we can repair the wall and go on and if it leaks and we can figure out something out, move on. Yeah. So that's where we are. I just haven't heard from it. Huh? Did I miss him? On City Auction Day. I got a hold of John Sutton, and he and I went over into the rock garage. John says we don't have enough to have an auction. He said about half of what we got over there, you couldn't get a bid on hardly an auction. And some of those are just metal desks and stuff. He said, he said you couldn't, he's had them before, you can't even get a $5 bid on them. He said, tell you what I'd do. He said, I'd take those discs, and we've got four or five of them over there, two or three piece units. He said, put them, bunch them together so that you can see what they look like. Put them along that wall, get your files together, file drawers together, and the chairs together. Clean all of it up, throw the doors open, and treat them like a garage sale. Put a price on them. Let people come and look at them and see. Then the rest of that, he said, I'm telling you, it ought to be hauled off. He said, it's, you know, if we, can, if we can give it away, fine. But that was the recommendation that John had. My question was, what do we do about the guns that Richie's got? He said, I'll have an auction one of these days where the, gun, the guns can be put in. I'll get a hold of Richie and we'll sell those at a regular. That would be a different deal. So I think tomorrow I've got I got a hold of Rick. I told him we needed about four men to go over there and get the bad stuff over on one side, get those desks and group them together. 
get the good stuff separated out, then we're going to clean. Then we'll cover it. It's going to have to be covered with plastic because the stuff's falling out of the roof. So that's the plan for the rock garage. <coughs> we have a lot of stuff. It's just not a lot of stuff that's going to sell. What This one. Oh, this is where Otis was. That's where he is over. So we give the garage sale a go and then walk away after this. We'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. That's a trouble. Yeah, we'll keep that over there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of like Leon's time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. no, uh, <laughs> if, if it was mine, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'll oh, be ready for it to be on. empty. It's not hurting anything. <laughs> <laughs> that fire truck, that fire truck's going to be ready one of these days. That siren came back from Erie, Pennsylvania. Boy, it's, it's beautiful. It's whole thing about that long. It's all chrome. You know, Twelve hundred bucks. It all looked pretty good. Yeah, it should. Yeah. yeah. Took them nineteen months. <laughs> Rodney doesn't have it. I haven't been out there yet, but I suspect he does. And that's what's taking so long about fire truck is that it's, we're down to the little stuff. Well, he's trying to put it back like she, like he was. She did a good job. Yeah. He had ladder. He had new ladders made. He did. He did. Had new ladders made. As she said. So. You know, I, I think K Y three will want to see it when it's done. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's absolutely. It is. It is beautiful. Uh, flame red's the color. Should be color. Huh? Yeah. Your Honor. It's Rodney and Rodney's pace, whatever. Rodney's about to get tired of looking at it, I imagine. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be five years this Christmas. That's when he'll get done. Hmm? No, we've been on it five years. He's been? When he got old, he gets tired of looking at it. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um, streets, street signs. We talked last time that the, the price we paid was thirty-two ninety-five per sign. Go Cogs got somebody. We can buy signs. What was the price of that? $24.95. $24.95. When the time comes, we get ready to put up new street signs. So that's a significant difference in the price of signs. With the landscaping, of course, is tabled until we, we did we did talk to Zach and we got some idea about what Zach had in mind and we're, that's kind of tabled until we get the back wall. We also had a meeting, um, I said so that was on Tuesday, Wednesday we had a meeting with uh, Lance Stillings was here and Jeff Searcy was here. And uh, that, that was an open meeting and so we pretty much don't need to rehashing that. But the next day, I believe it was the next day, Lance and myself and Jim Johnson went out to Yoko and um, unhooking those things is not going to be an issue. Moving them is going to be the biggest issue. They're 12 feet tall and 7 to 10,000 pounds each. He actually has five compactors and he says these three are yours and this little one's yours. This one's ours. And I said, uh, are you still going to recycle? He said, oh yeah. I said, well what? Recycling, he said, uh, ten cans of plastic. I said, where are you come get them? They have a contract with Coca-Cola. They have this machine, yeah. if you remember, that bursts yeah. the cans in the bottle. So he said, that's where they were going to get them. And I said, well, the um, the trailers we have um, titles for at least ten that I remember. And I said, you're going to take the cardboard. I said, yes, we're. It turns out we have the titles for 12 instead of 10. So um, he also had a horizontal compactor, which Jeff Searcy had talked about being much more suitable for plastic for some reason. And I said something to Jim about it. Jim said, yes, there, it doesn't work. There's an awful lot of stuff out there that doesn't work. And they don't use it at all. Uh, I asked if he'd give it to us. He said, no, he'd sell it to us. 
and he had a glass crusher, which, you know, they don't take glass, and the situation was the same there with that. They could document it was theirs and not sell it. I didn't comment on it. I did, come, I did send an email to Cindy and told her that we might be interested in those at a nominal fee. And I'm not sure, but I think Monday's their board meeting. And um, I think she'll email me about it. We'll see. They're in the way. I mean, that horizontal, that horizontal thing, two thirds of the size of that length of that wall, and it's head high. I mean, it's a huge, huge thing. Uh, I was out recycling today, and he's made some progress. Not always easy to tell how much progress we've made, but he, he has made some. Did not go inside the building. Came to work yesterday, needed to go to the post office, I needed to go to the bank, I needed to go to the courthouse. All of them closed. <clears throat> and I hadn't even thought about it. I didn't realize yesterday it was going to be a holiday. So, my recommendation is that we adopt Columbus Day as a holiday because it can't difficult to function if everybody else closed. <laughs> Take Christmas away. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I recommended that we add, I mean, we've got plenty of holidays. That's not really an issue, but it, it kind of ties our hands when we get here and everybody else is closed. They can't get their deposits. They can't get our I Oh, we, and I needed to go into the, I needed to go to the session office and couldn't get up there. So uh, this resolution was it? The well, ordinance was if, if they were in favor of that. Okay. Well, I don't know that we need to do we need a motion for that? Do you suppose? It, on the uh, ordinance. Let's let's, let's have a motion to adopt. Please, let's have a motion to adopt Columbus Day as an additional official holiday. I'll make that motion. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure. Number 1004, an ordinance to amend Chapter 2, Administration of the Code of Ordinances, City of Ava, Missouri, by repealing Section 380A and replacing it with the following Section 380A, adding Columbus Day as a legal holiday off. Sell it would may come after it. 
We're just going to see how it works. The county is going to have five, I think, five vehicles. And mostly from the Sheriff's Department, I think, because they've got a new pickup. But we'll have that. And, uh, and, uh, and we thought we'd just put that car in. We're trying to, offer, trying to get bids on it. It wouldn't work. And of course, that old pick, that old truck that we're going to get rid of, I, I told Keith, ever since we decided to get a new truck, that old truck hadn't had anything go wrong with it. <laughs> That's good. Kind of like the roof. But uh, anyway, uh, I think I would like to entertain a motion to uh, allow Purple Wave to auction those two vehicles off. And they'll be down on the 10th. Yeah, well, they'll, be down, they'll be down about 10 days. You already got organized with the county then also? Yes, he did that. I'm perfectly way did that. He said, they, and he said, I'm coming down in about 10 days to take the pictures and do all that. And I said, well, I think we'll have a car and a truck you can look at. It. And if that's permissible, you can make a motion. I'm going to motion to uh, allow him to okay. sell the truck. Second. I'll second that. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now, young man, here's the deal on your bench. Uh, as Sherry and I looked at it, uh, things are never quite as simple as it, it may seem. So we looked at several different things and we looked at what different towns have done. And we're in the process of putting together what we call a donation policy for the park. And I've kind of roughed one out for the council to look at. And Sherry and I have been working on it also. And we will um, give us another two weeks. Okay. And I told Sherry to tell you, I knew it wasn't going to be approved tonight because we just didn't get it done in time. But if you'll give us another two weeks, we'll come up with a policy. Now, let, let me tell you, something up front so that you know it. It was our opinion that the, the donation was fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But it, it's our responsibility to be in charge of the park to decide what, the, what kind of donation it can be and what it should look like and where it should be placed. And we're all in favor of donations and we're in favor of a bench. We'd like for it to be the type of bench that fits in with our park, okay. and we don't feel that the granite okay. thing will. Okay. So we'll have a wood bench we're looking at with uh, cast aluminum frame, which is a nice, nice bench, and it's a six foot bench, and then made out of wood. And then we're looking at one that's a little bit more expensive, made out of vinyl, okay. which, which they say lasts a lifetime, but yeah. nothing lasts a lifetime. Yeah. So that, I'm just telling you now, that's what we're looking at. Okay. And uh, we still may make some changes in it, but on what, you know, what, what we've got typed out, and what's been presented is the beginning stage. But Sherry and I have looked at it quite a bit, but these guys, these guys have not seen it. So Thank you. We will, I would expect, make a decision. In two weeks. Yep, in two weeks. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, appreciate it. You bet. Reminder, Clay Tom. Flaming Fall Review Center. And uh, did we have anything else? Just forget one more time. Thank you. I should check for everything. You've been checking them all. Thank <laughs> you.